What's up? This is Jerry from Papa Roach, and you're watching Fret12.com. Right now, I'm actually using the Axe Effects. I had a 20 space rack full of stuff, and um, you know, going over to, to Europe and, and Russia and all that, it uh, costs a lot of money. So I figured, you know, give it a shot. I know that, you know, the, the, the last one was okay, but I heard a lot of great things about the new one and uh, it's not perfect, but it's, it's really, really close and uh, it's about that big. No uh, pedals or anything. It's just all what's in the in the unit. I have a little power amp, the little um, Electro Harmonics Magnum 44, and uh, that goes to one of the cabinets, and that's just for air on the stage. And then you know the other signal goes out to DI in front of house. I don't bring studio stuff on the road just because mm -hmm. amps that sound great generally either need a lot of care or they're delicate or you know I just don't want to deal with that plus you know we have a lot of different sounds that that happen during you know the record and even sometimes the course of a song To get those kind of sounds, I'd have to bring out four or five different amps, and I don't want to do that. So I just, you know, in the past, I was using the Marshall um, preamp, you know, mm -hmm. and that afforded me, you know, the ability to do all the different sounds. And so um, this new thing is is uh, doing everything as well. For this last one, it was actually a Bogner. Um, our, the producer James Michael he said uh, you know he's, he's got this favorite amp that he, he likes to use and, and he just he had just bought one and brought it up and uh, honestly I don't know which model it is mm -hmm. but it was uh, beige and we turned it up and it sounded great I actually used all of my guitars on this one. You know, in the past records, it's usually been Les Pauls and you know, right? Um, and tellies. I, you know, I have a Telly and I have a, a Les Paul, but we, we ended up using a lot of Schecters. This was this Pisces was uh, part of the record cover of Paramore Sessions. That's uh, I love the Karina wood. It, it sounds great. And then this is my main for the C, drop C tunings. It's a variation on the signature series. Um, and as far as pedals go, you know, it just depends on the, you know, the, the vibe and the part and, you know, use delay and uh, we we used a pog and, um, you know, choruses and, you know, phasers and that kind of stuff. But, right. But no, like... You know, we, we're not the kind of band that says we need this brand this year, you know what I mean? Right. Like, it's just like we, we, if we have a couple to choose from, we'll pick, you know, the best one and, and do that. But, you know, if, if, if we spend all that time focusing on what to use, it just takes away from time that, that we could be working. So. <laughs> Sometimes we reset the Bogner. We also used a Vox, okay. uh, and I don't think that was the lead tone, but you know, it, it, it was. We used it for more of the overdub stuff, um, more of the jangly stuff, and then we'd actually um, turn the gain up and, and get a nice bright overdub tone. Um, for leads, you know, I think it was just we would re do use a different guitar. Reset the Bogner and maybe put a pet like a, a dry pedal in there or something. You don't need a lot of low end. 
because that's what the bass is for. I've noticed that a lot of guys, especially in metal bands, they'll have tones that, that are really, you know, deep and woofy and it sounds great when you're by yourself, but when you put it in a band and put it in a mix, it just gets lost. Right. So that was that was one of the um, points that we had in, you know, sort of our philosophy was that, you know, we treat the bass and the guitar as one instrument and um, they have to they have to have their own space, but they have to blend together as well. So um, that, and then a lot of a lot of uh, what uh, you hear is somebody's tone is in their hands. It happened pretty naturally, you know. We we. Figured out what amps, you know, kind of gave us the sound, the the tone that we were looking for, and they're pretty classic things, you know, you, a Marshall and an Ampeg. You know, bands have been using them together for a long time. You know, we just take example from you know, our favorite bands and, and that kind of stuff. But um, I think some of it has to do with the fact that Tobin sometimes plays the bass as a second guitar. And, you know, we kind of harmonize together and not just, he doesn't just play the root note, you know what I mean? And so it just makes things more interesting and, and it sort of makes up for the fact that there's only one guitar player. happens a bunch of different ways. Uh, Tobin writes a lot of stuff and sometimes you know he'll have it written already in his computer. Uh, sometimes it'll just be a riff that we hear. Sometimes I'll have something. Sometimes it'll be a jam. Uh, it just it's however. It, it, it usually starts with the music and we don't get uh, lyrics first but um, it happens tons of different ways. For this record, uh, for past records, we've done it where we would take maybe a month and uh, write all together, you know. This time uh, was different. We did, we would write like three songs, record them so that everything was fresh. Because in the past, you know, we would rehearse it and rehearse it and get everything technically um, close to perfect. But then by that point, uh, the feel is taken out of it, the energy is kind of taken out of it, and so this time we wanted to kind of preserve that energy and that freshness and just, you know, get the basics of it down and just throw it down, you know, and that, I think that helped a lot, especially with the drum tracks um, and the feel of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, you know, we, we, would, we took our time actually on this one. We took, I think, maybe six months. Um, but it, a lot of it had to do with the fact that we were in our own studio mm -hmm. and um, we didn't have to pay, you know, yeah, you 1500 bucks a day, yeah, 2000 a day, yeah, so. I don't know, I mean, I, I think, you know, some of it is we, we know that people, when they come to a show, they want to see a performance. They don't want to just watch a band play songs because mm -hmm. if you just wanted to listen to music, you could listen in your car or whatever um, so you know we wanted to make an we want to make it an experience and we want to keep the crowd involved and we want to have that energy exchange <laughs> That's what keeps us going is the exchange of energy between us and the crowd. And um, I mean, you know, there are some nights where the crowd's not really giving it, and we got to work a little extra harder. But um, you know, we we really that's the main focus and the most important thing is to get that feedback and that energy from the crowd. That and and to have people go home saying, "Man, 
I, I want to go again, you know. Right now, I think my favorite song to play live would be Before I Die. I've taken a liking to sing in harmony vocals, and uh, you know it's pretty much through the whole song. So it, it's uh, some of it's challenging, you know, which is good, and and it just you know kind of I get that full you know experience of having all the music and and the vocals with the full harmonies, and it's it's cool. <laughs> Well, the riff is more important. Yeah. You know. Well, just like for the life of the song, but I guess as the guitarist of the band, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of go back and forth between both, you know. It's, it, you know, the cool thing is, like, when I start playing between Angels and Insects, it's like, as soon as I start playing that riff, everybody knows what it is, you know. And that's that's kind of been one of the hallmarks of Papa Roach, is that we have that, you know, trying to make that riff that people recognize and um, yeah I think that is more important but you know my attention span kind of is short so right now I'm, I'm liking singing especially when I just want to rock on stage right. it's like just let him sing it when I'm at home uh, generally when we're not like writing or rehearsing I'm spending time with kids. Family so, zone, I got you. Yeah, it's it's hard, you know. It's it's uh, it's one of those balances that you have to keep going. <laughs> Two of the guys live in LA, and then Jacoby and I live in Northern California, so mm -hmm. we're not together all the time. And you know, when we when we go off tour, we say I would love to say I'm going to miss you, but I'm not. See you later. <laughs> because we spend more time together than we do with our families. Right. So, you know, we just break off, do our own thing, and then, you know, when it comes time to tour, we'll go in and rehearse and just, you know, polish everything up, you know, knock the rest off and that kind of stuff. Hetfield, Gilmore, Page, you know, most of, this, most of those same guys. Uh, I like a lot of um, what Mark Morton does. Okay. Uh, he's really, I, I like his creativity and uh, mix between metal and blues. And um, man, there's a lot of guys. Ty Tabor is a great player, really underrated. Our whole musical career has been, you know, about change and about evolution and we never really just stuck to one thing. It's, you know, you could chalk it up to boredom or, you know, constantly hearing new influences and or or just kind of, you know, as you grow older, being able to appreciate those influences. Um, and, you know, we just write the you know the best songs that that we can the, the the songs that we feel happy with and you know I think a lot of it has to do also with the fact that Jacoby writes about personal things and he writes from an honest place and and people connect with that so I, you know those two together I think is is plus we're one of the hardest working bands ever. <laughs> Starting, you know, from the late 20s, early 30s, um, he's opening up a can of worms because I can go for days, but, you know, I really like the, the French cars of the 30s, um, 40s. I like hot rods. I like the um, cars of, of, like, the early 50s. Um, I can appreciate muscle cars, but I'm not really into them. I'm, you know, when it comes to, like, performance, it's more kind of the modern stuff. Um, I have a Dodge Viper, um, and uh, I have a Mini Cooper, and uh, I just 
almost finished building a, a 51 Mercury, so I'm kind of all over the board, but um, yeah. I'd probably be doing something with cars. I'd probably either be building cars or racing cars. Maybe I said the right things wrong, but what